Good evening. Today, I want to give you an update on some of the critical work that's been happening behind the scenes to ensure that we are prepared as well as possible for the continued impact of coronavirus on our community. I particularly want to address the situation regarding the supply of PPE, that's personal protective equipment, available to our frontline workers in healthcare and across island services. Now, there have been some reports in the media saying that frontline staff don't have access to the PPE they need. I want to be absolutely clear in saying this is not the case. The protection of our frontline health workers, who are saving lives on a daily basis, is an absolute priority. We've made a substantial investment in PPE, and the first pallets of an increased supply, uh, supply arrived on the island earlier this week. We've already begun distributing those supplies, and more are on their way. On behalf of all organisations who require PPE, we've set up a PPE coordination group working with health and community services. They will coordinate an island-wide approach to assure an appropriate supply of PPE is available to all those who need that equipment to carry out their role. And I do stress the word appropriate, as not all workers need the same equipment. And so this group will manage the demands on our supply including prioritising the distribution of equipment with advice provided by a specialist risk stratification group made up of clinical and logistic experts. So this will ensure that PPE is issued to island-wide organisations within a scope approved by government to control the risk and spread of infection in the community. As of today, we've had 170 confirmed cases of coronavirus in Jersey, 1,322 negative results, and we are awaiting the results of 142 tests. 16 islanders are currently being treated in hospital with a very small number receiving intensive care treatment. Now, we will not be releasing the number in ITU as it risks breaching patient confidentiality. Earlier today, Ministers received a report from officials on the impact of our restrictive measures on the island's infection curve. And the latest statistical modelling will be released tomorrow. But I want to say now that our progress is good. And it indicates that the measures we've implemented so far are working. But I must emphasise that we are at an incredibly early stage and a steepening of the curve may yet take place. So tomorrow we'll publish that data and it will be available to all of you on our website. Now, while we are making positive progress in the management of the virus, thanks to the cooperation and goodwill of islanders, we know that sadly, more people will die. We've set up a new group, which includes representatives from across the government, States of Jersey Police, the Deputy Viscount, the Superintendent Registrar, faith groups and the island's funeral directors. Their work will ensure that we are suitably prepared for an increase in the number of deaths and that any islander will be treated with the utmost care and dignity whilst at rest. We are also preparing to provide additional mortuary space if required as part of the island's contingency plans for dealing with the coronavirus outbreak. So this facility, which we're calling the Sanctum, will only be used if Jersey's existing mortuary space is not sufficient. Due to social distancing restrictions and to protect all, all islanders, we've also taken the unfortunate step to limit the number of mourners attending funerals. Now I know that losing a loved one is a profoundly distressing experience and funerals are an important and personal way of mourning. But during this very difficult time, our aim is to protect the most vulnerable from the spread of coronavirus. And therefore, and as we've previously stated, only small funeral services are permitted of up to 10 close family members, and they can only be attended by those family members who are not in isolation or not required to self-isolate as a result of the death. And there is a final hugely important point I want to make. This period of lockdown has increased the vulnerability of certain adults and children who are confined to their home environment and are at an increased risk of abuse. And it makes it harder for those at risk to access support services and seek help. 
Safeguarding is everyone's responsibility. So the community must work together during our time staying home to protect and look out for vulnerable adults, children and families. We need to keep them safe and in sight as invisibility increases vulnerability. Family members, neighbours and friends should have the courage to make a call to one of our services, if in doubt, to secure the best advice. Please don't assume someone else will make that call. If you suspect abuse, please report it. In these challenging times, it is everyone's responsibility to support and protect the vulnerable. Over this weekend, we will continue to provide you with updates on our testing, our wider healthcare preparations, and the steps we're taking to protect Islanders and to prepare for an increase in the number of those suffering from the virus. I want to provide you with more information that will help you understand the impact of the restrictive steps we've already taken to reduce the spread of coronavirus in our community. So from next week, that will include the number of patients treated who've recovered from COVID-19. Now, I know Islanders have been asking for these statistics, and I hope they'll help Islanders gain a better understanding of the island-wide picture. This picture will be further supplemented uh, as we begin island-wide antibody testing later in the month, and we'll be making some further announcements on that shortly. Thank you for taking the time to listen to what I've been saying tonight. I know some of what I've said will be difficult to hear, but please continue to follow the stay-at-home instructions because by doing so, you are making a real difference and saving lives.